Hello everybody, it's Tanner Fishies here, back again with a new Ninjago video here on the channel. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at Ninjago Seabound set number 71756, Hydro Bounty. This massive Ninjago summer set features 1,159 pieces and retails for about $130 in the United States. This thing is really, really massive. This was, of course, the main ninja sea vessel during the events of Ninjago Seabound, and it features a lot of really beautiful shapes and a lot of really beautiful, I guess, colors in general. Really excellent features as well. There are several play features in this set, and we're going to be taking a look closely at those later on. I was very excited to get my hands on this set because I figured this set would be a lot more, I guess, beneficial to me than sets like the Land Bounty, for example. And I'm happy to say I think I made the right decision here in purchasing this set. This set comes with a lot of minifigures, lots of things to do, and a lot of other side accessories as well that we're going to be taking a look at later on. In terms of the box, this is what we got going on for the box. Just your standard Ninjago Seabound box. The art on these boxes never ceases to amaze me. Unfortunately, my box is kind of dented in a few areas because it was shipped through the mail. This is what the back of the box looks like, pretty much what you would expect. So I am very excited to start digging deep into this set and seeing what there is to see and showcasing some of my favorite parts. So why don't we get started by taking a look at the minifigures and then we will jump into some of the other stuff until we eventually work our way up to the Hydro Bounty itself. So for good guys, this is basically what we got going on. We get all six of these scuba ninja in their obviously beefed up and powerful looking scuba forms. All of these guys have all of their armor attached, including their weapons, which they all indeed have that type of, I guess, uh, harpoon gun thing, if you want to call it that. But each one kind of has a different attachment on it, as you can see. Uh, it's different for each ninja, but this is basically what they all look like all lined up. If you wanted me to go into a little bit more detail regarding regarding each minifigure individually, I would recommend checking out my Scuba Ninja Showcase video where I actually went into detail regarding all six of these figures. I will point out though that Scuba Nia right here is indeed exclusive to this set. This is the only set that you can actually get her in. And the three ninja on the left, Jay, Kai, and Lloyd, also include these pieces in the set. Uh, it's basically their hair pieces from the island if you wanted to basically swap out the helmets and give them this look. Uh, exact same hair pieces from the island, you guys get it. I just thought that was a very interesting inclusion. You don't get them for all of the ninja, just three of them. In terms of bad guy minifigures, you get Prince Kalmar once again and a Moray Guard. The Moray Guard I've already talked about in other videos. I will just say, once again, I do really like the colors on this thing. It's very nice with the black, the gold, and the blue. The nice blue flippers also add to it, and this one in particular is carrying one of those dagger pieces. But taking a closer look at Kalmar, I've already gone in detail regarding this guy too. He is quite an alright figure. I think this guy looks really cool for what he is. Nice reflective printing everywhere. I love the armor. I love the squid legs. My only issue though still with these figures, especially for Kalmar, is that Kalmar has very dead looking eyes. And I feel like this figure doesn't really have a lot of life to him as you can see. So um, yeah, it's really my only complaint regarding Prince Kalmar. I've already gone into more detail about this figure in my Temple of the Endless Sea review. So check that out if you want to hear me ramble about Kalmar a little bit more. You do get his nice big trident though. So that's good. I just wish that this guy had some, I guess, better eye printing. That's really my only big complaint regarding this figure. You also do get these guys, which the box refers to as the Woo Bots. Not really sure what these guys are supposed to be. Maybe training dummies, maybe something else. They do have a nice little uh, print there. These guys are pretty much identical, but that print is quite nice on there. I really do like that. You also get some nice uh, traditional Master Woo style legs. And these guys also have flippers too, in case you wanted to, uh, you know, send them underwater. But these guys are basically the exact same thing, and you get two of them. In terms of other random stuff that you get in this set, you also get this little selection of random stuff. These are basically storage containers. You just pop the tops off of there, and you can put weapons or whatever in there. You get two of these identical uh, storage bins. And this thing right here, I've kind of been using as a uh, as a wig stand, so you could store some of the other ninja's hair pieces if you really wanted to. Remember, you do get Lloyd's, Kai's, and Jay's in this set. And I've just been using this to store the hair pieces. I'm not sure if that's what this is actually supposed to be used for, but you get that look, which doesn't look terrible. So the ninja can run and grab their wigs during battle if they need to, or whatever works. I like this stuff. You can store all of these in the Hydra Bounty itself. Prince Kalmar gets this cool little chariot of sorts. I really like how this is kind of set up here. Of course, if you wanted to bring in Prince Kalmar, you can, and he can just sit right back in here. He just basically sits on those brown open studs and 
and uh, yeah, attaching him is easier said than done. But then there you go. He's like riding his little chariot thing with this nice stingray pulling him along. How nice of the stingray. I'm sure he's not being controlled or anything like that. He probably willingly wants to do this. I mean, who wouldn't for uh, for this guy back here? I mean, look at him. He's, he's very handsome. But yeah, the actual stingray itself looks cool. It looks fine. You got these nice little spike things underneath here, and that all attaches to the main chariot, I guess, using uh, this black bracket piece or whatever. Kalmar can also hold on to this little uh, rope or lasso for the stingray, but I don't really feel like positioning him like that right now. These flags on the back, you can also uh, move up and down. You can basically adjust those to whatever you would like. These are stickers right down here. You get identical stickers on either side, just adding some more detail and whatnot. I really like the colors on this chariot, and I think it's a nice inclusion overall, giving Kalmar a type of vehicle of sorts. The Hydra Bounty set also includes these two little torpedo pod things. You get one for Lloyd and one for Cole, and these things we've already talked about before as well. They're basically the exact same build just with subtle differences to fit each ninja for example on Lloyd's here you can see the colors are a bit different you get some different stickers and the attachments down here are a little different compared to this one for cold you can kind of see how that works uh, but yeah overall these guys are basically built using the same type of material this thing can spin in the background you can adjust these little wings as you see fit if you would like to and once again you can open up the latch and put your ninja in there you get two of them in this set like I said and uh, yeah one for Cole one for Lloyd, they're okay, but what I really like about these two things is that you can actually put them in the Hydra Bounty for storage. Everything you can essentially store in the main Hydra Bounty itself. All right, guys, here we have the Hydra Bounty, the main build in this set. This is where most of your money is going, and if I'm being honest, I really like how this thing looks overall. It is quite large, and as such, it hardly fits in my recording space, but this is basically the entire shape of the Hydra Bounty itself. As you can see, just doing a quick little rotation here, it is quite long. It looks like a very long uh, sandwich, maybe, kind of making me a little hungry. Get it? It's a sub, but it's also a sub in another way, if that makes sense. You guys get it. Ha ha funny. Uh, the back here, let's start off with the back. As you can see, the back, let's just... Uh, Let's look at the back. Let's look at the back. This is the back of the Hydro Bounty. As you can see, the first thing that I'm sure you guys would notice is this large sail piece right here, which is actually made out of a vinyl material. I like how that's printed, though. I'm not sure if the red goes with the rest of the color scheme. There is red in other places, but not that much. I would have preferred the sail to be maybe primarily blue or gold. You do get some blue and gold on there, however, and you can actually angle this thing any way you want by using this little uh, hinge right there. You can basically get any angle you would like. These thrusters are quite massive. I want to turn your attention to these really quick. Let's uh, let's pan down a little bit so we can take a look at these thrusters. Once again, I apologize. This thing is huge. As you can see, these are actually done up really well. You have these things, which of course you can't angle, and I'm kind of spoiling the, the transformation feature here. But yeah, you can adjust these little golden bits. Now, the transformation actually comes when you come over to the back and pull on this thing. If you pull it... Um, some weird stuff happens. Boom. The entire thruster opens, and that is true for either side. It does the exact same thing on the other side, which uh, for some reason mine's not doing. There we go. <laughs> Got it. But with the opening thrusters, it actually looks like the Hydra Bounty is, you know, going super quick or traveling underwater. It basically acts as a, I guess, transportation look if you wanted to. And those are easy enough to close up. You just got to do that and adjust them evenly on both sides. And now you are ready to go again. They also do have some stickers back here. As you can see, these stickers actually look really nice. And if you uh, spin around to the front of the thruster, you actually do get what appears to be a little spinning fan thing. And that's actually made up using some shield pieces, which is really, really creative. I like how that looks actually. Just moving forward a little bit more, we're going to be taking a look at some of the inside stuff a little bit later, but I really like how this is actually shaped right here. The main cab piece, if you want to call it that, not really sure what you would refer to this as, is actually quite nice. I love the way that these windows have been uh, used and shaped. That looks really good. Again, you can adjust these pieces to do whatever you want to the roof. There also is a little bit of a uh, periscope thing up here. I think that's what that's called, and you can adjust that as you will. It can also be seen as like some type of exhaust port thing, I, I guess. Now, like I said, 
there are some details inside, but we'll look at that later. I will just say though, it does have one of these windscreen pieces that you can lift up and get access to some of the stuff inside. We'll take a look at those later on or all that stuff later on. As you can see here, once again, this thing is quite long and this whole section right here is quite even. As you can see, we do have a sticker right here, nice little dragon sticker. You also have some lanterns and some more dragon detailing. Now this big blue thing right here actually acts as a door, which can be opened like so. Let's spin the bounty around so you can get a look at that from the other side. Opening up the Hydro Bounty, you can actually see inside of the main storage compartment. Now this is actually where you would store uh, these little torpedo pod things. They can just sit in there. It's kind of easier said than done, but eventually you can get them in there and both of them do fit in there. The instructions and the box suggest that you put them in facing each other. Uh, that will probably make storage a little bit more easy and a little more accessible and you can just close it up like so. Just a quick little storage option for those torpedo pods. I think that is very much, very much appreciated and very important. Of course, following all of these really cool details on the side of the Hydra Bounty will lead you to the front, which as you can see has a lot going on. You can also adjust these things much like you could for the back thrusters. And as you can see, they do indeed have a spring loaded missile stuck in here, which can be accessed by pushing down this orange bar back here. That'll allow the missile to just go shooting out and uh, I'll never be able to find it again. The only thing that I really dislike about the entire shape is that the front of the Hydra Bounty actually does kind of disrupt the flow a little bit, but there's a reason for that. As you can see, these gold pieces right here are not at all connected to this, which is supposed to act as a continuation. But then again, if it were to be a little bit more streamlined, you could not do the transformation thing, which is started when you actually detach the entire front from the Hydra Bounty, which like I said, is kind of easier said than done, much like a lot of things on this bounty. And we'll take a look at this piece here in a second. But looking at the Hydra Bounty just from this angle, you can see some really interesting stuff going on down here. This thing can of course uh, spin ever so slightly if you wanted it to. Not really sure what that's supposed to be representing, but of course with the front of the bounty removed, that shaping is very much lost, which is kind of unfortunate there. But hey, at least you do get uh, this little section, which uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that. The front of the Hydra Bounty actually does indeed become its own little robot, which is actually quite interesting and kind of a good idea. In order to get to the robot mode, what you're going to be doing first is you're going to be uh, flipping the thing over and using the uh, the ball joints here to basically push out these little legs. That's basically it for the legs. If you wanted to, you could also adjust these like so. Then you get that look going. Then you come around to this side and unclip this from the top section. Sometimes it does fall apart a little bit and you just have to readjust it. Uh, basically do the same thing on the other side. And uh, once you got that done, you can basically rearrange the arms, reposition them, and you have a little robot right here. And the little robot is actually kind of cool. He kind of reminds me of, um, I don't know if you guys have seen the anime Gurren Logan, but it kind of looks like something out of there. Uh, this top part can also be adjusted if you want to. You can open that or shut that, whatever. You can also adjust this horn ever so slightly. But yeah, the sticker here actually does look like a face, which is kind of cool. I like how that looks. These look like eyes. This looks like a mouth. It does kind of remind me of kind of a stout little mech. As you can see, the arms are on ball joints as well. And these parts of the arms are on hinges so you can get some decent fighting poses going on. I don't really care for the legs on this guy. The legs are kind of uh, lackluster. You do get a ball joint right here as well as a uh, ratchet joint right here for the feet. And it stands decently enough if you can get it into a standing pose. It is a decent looking robot when you stand it up like that. But in terms of its actual functionality, to my knowledge, we never really saw anything like this in the show. I think I would remember something like this, but feel free to tell me if I'm wrong. I would just kind of prefer if this robot idea was kind of scrapped in favor of making the Hydra Bounty look a little bit more streamlined, but uh, the robot as it is doesn't look so terrible. You can see there is some detailing on the back as well, and those stickers do make for quite an interesting look in the robot mode. But yeah, not really too sure how to feel about this whole robot thing. And of course, I promised you guys a quick look at the interior, which you can access easily by flipping up this little uh, panel thing, this little windscreen. And as you can see in there, there is a lot of stuff going on. To make things even more easy, the entire roof can also pop off as one single assembly. And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff going on in there. You do have a little bit of a steering wheel right here, as well as a compass and some areas for the ninja to sit if you would like to actually populate this scene. So yeah, guys, overall with the Hydra Bounty build, I don't hate it. I feel like some parts of it are very much stubborn and kind of a chore to take apart and display or even build for that matter or attach to the main build itself. But overall, I'm very happy with the way that this vehicle actually looks. I think the colors are really nice. The design is really sharp and angular. And while it does look like a giant sand 
sandwich. I think there is some enjoyment to be found within here for everybody. I just really like how this design looks overall. It's very sleek and very well designed. Here's what you get for the instruction manual. You only get one in this set, surprisingly. And here is the spent sticker sheet. The stickers are kind of evenly distributed amongst all of the builds. Here you have the extra pieces, which does indeed contain a brick separator, which is always good for Lego collectors and Lego mockists. So overall, what do I think of the Hydro Bounty? I am very happy to announce that I am very much pleased with this set. I really think that this is a big improvement over something like the Land Bounty from a couple of years ago, which I'm not a really big fan of. And I also think this makes for a very impressive build in general. The underwater atmosphere fits perfectly with this design, and I feel like you do indeed get a fair amount of things in this set to cover for that $130 price point. The price for part ratio is not as good as I would have liked to have seen, but the Hydra Bounty does use a lot of really large pieces and a lot of really good pieces to get your hands on. So all in all, I would say if you can afford this set, I'd recommend picking it up because it is worth it. If you only get one Ninjago Seabound set, you should probably make it this one. You get all six of the scuba ninja and you do get the main villain in this set as well so this set pretty much covers everything if you get this set you pretty much have a lot of the main collectibles for this season and once again you do have all six of the ninja plus their primary vehicle so yeah this is a very good set i would recommend it if you can afford it and with all that being said you guys that'll pretty much wrap it up for my thoughts here today thank you so much for checking out this video this has been a quick look at the ninjago seabound hydro bounty let me know down below in the comments what you think about this set if you have it or if you are planning on getting it let me know down below also let me know what you thought of the video itself and once again thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed feel free to like comment subscribe do all that fun stuff and check out the links down below in the description from other forms of social media as always big shout out goes out to my patreon supporters including once again the marvelous jan thank you guys so much for checking out this video once again my name is tan fishies and with that i bid you farewell